I just want to go back because I, I can read. <laughs> you were famous before you were famous, and so you um, you had you had acted in some significant London theater and. <laughs> all right. All right, you had gotten some crappy parts that nobody ever heard of. Um, you had had really not a great modeling career. You, 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 you were too much of a manly man for the, for the modeling business. But uh, too, too manly and too girly at the same time. Just it's tough to pull off, but yeah. you're the guy. And also, and you can't even do the androgynous look when you've got like a pot belly as well. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't work. You just screw face these. You should never have entered the industry. But there's there's this whole without getting into spoilers. There's this whole thing about a guy who's uh, at the end of the movie. You know, just when you think it's safe to kind of calm down and watch the movie, Paul Giamatti just comes in Whoa! like this, and it. I mean, it's remarkable, and it's you know you guys do a great thing. You talk for, you know, uh, it, a long time. I don't. Twenty two minutes. Tw uh -huh. All right. Now you're spoiling. <laughs> they won't. They won't be looking at their watches. Trust me. It's no. It's it. It is. We're gonna see a clip of it at the end. But it's 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 remarkable. But that guy is organizing himself in relation to someone else's fame. Mm -hmm. And so, what is it about America and fame? I mean, you've been it's, at the heart of it. Uh, I think it's because America really wants to have a royal family. And I, <laughs> You do. Yeah. I mean, it's like, because that's really what it is. But it's like, you know, you want to have a, uh, uh, like a, uh, like a, a kind of democratic royal family. Like it's, right. you, you pick your, you know, this is people pick their, uh, their king and queen and whatever, and, you know, all the princes. And it's exactly the same thing. I mean, but, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a meritocratic version of it. Sort of. Actually, no, it's not at all. <laughs> I, mean, like, I mean, it's almost totally but random. But it is. It's a trip that's laid on. So if you and Kristen have trouble, it's like Charles and Di having trouble. or It's... Um... <laughs> <laughs> I think this would lead to... <laughs> what? Uh... I wasn't really going there, just so you know. I don't think, no, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go that far. Okay. <laughs> no, let's stop at Princess Snooky. <laughs> would be Princess Snooky. That's a different kind of American royalty. Uh, yeah, Is he bored? I don't think he's bored. No, no. He's absor like he's ferociously absorbing everything yeah. to the point where like he just reaches the end of his capacity to absorb. And I think I'm... Um, what can't you do, Rob Pattinson? <laughs> this, this is a Spanish accent which I learned off watching uh, interviews with the, the manager of Liverpool Football Club. <laughs> that was my dialect coach. But you see, that's totally legitimate. And, uh, it doesn't matter how you manage to do it. A Liverpudlian, Liverpudlian Spanish accent, that's how I was yeah. going to And it worked with all the other weird Spanish accents. <laughs> this is why you're unemployable. Why? Because you want to kill people. That's not why I'm unemployable. Then why? Because I stink. Smell me. Smell me? <laughs> Even when you self-destruct, you have to fail more, lose more, die more than others, stink more than others. You want to watch a movie? <laughs> Every time I see a clip, I want to watch the movie. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you and Paul Giamatti for 22 minutes. Uh, probably uh, quite a bit of fun for you professionally. Absolutely, yeah. And, and almost every single person, because we'd shoot with a new actor and do a chunk, and I, I only had Sarah Gadden. Who else came back for the for, uh, frequent, uh, more than one scene? Why am I blanking on this? Um, because it's a director. Talk about, talk about, yeah, talk about. And, uh, yeah, so uh, we'd, have a, we'd have a few days, and so I'd be in a kind of state of perpetual nervousness the whole time, because normally you can kind of get used to the other uh, actors you're working with and stuff. Um, and I'd already done, like, you know, with this scene with Juliette Binoche, we, she's like my favorite actress, one of, 
And, uh, She's grabbing at your ankles. Yeah, well, I'm we're literally having sex within about two minutes of meeting her. I mean, like, uh, there was no rehearsal, nothing. She'd flown in from Paris. Like, I mean, that was, that was it. And, uh, but with Paul, it was obviously the most significant chunk. We had six days at the end of the movie to shoot it. Uh, and he turned up. And this funny thing about Paul, because everyone, everyone basically has the same opinion of Paul. Everyone thinks he's like a genius. And, yes. But, and he does not realize at all. It's the strangest thing. He, like, it's like he's never acted before. And, and, and it's not even vaguely fake humility. I mean, it's, he doesn't even know what he's done. And, uh, and so he turns up and he's absolutely petrified to do this scene, saying exactly the same stuff I was saying at the beginning. Say like, I don't understand what it's about. Like, what, you know, I don't know, I have no idea how to do it. <laughs> And uh, so it kind of calmed me down a little bit. I and mean, I found out afterwards as well, which is the weird thing, we both looked at the exact same video on YouTube for, uh, the, uh, for the, our characters, like the exact same thing, which is this video of uh, Jeffrey Dahmer with his dad doing an interview. And we'd literally been studying the same thing. And I was like, it's in the most incredibly strange, like nothing to do with the, the script at all. And just round about the same time, we looked at the same thing. But I love Paul. I think he's, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was great. And for a kind of intense scene, it was just really, we were, we were just playing it for laughs, basically. <laughs> By the way, Jeffrey Dahmer is not a sociopath. He's a psychopath. We ought to make that clear. He's a, he's a, he's a psychotic. It. You know, I was literally. It's worse than sociopath. Just, just sec though. Explain the difference. But a psychotic is as dangerous and capable of murder. Right. The thing I found interesting with that interview specifically is how his dad was with him. Uh, and that's what I related to with, with Eric, where you kind of have, it's, it's, it's a thing about empathy. I mean, what the, sometimes like empathy causing you, causing you pain, a lot of pain. And, uh, and so you know, he's kind of, Eric, a lot of, a lot of his world is insulating himself from some kind of fear of pain or something. Uh, and, uh, I think. Yep. Did you, in, in either technical or professional terms, is there anything you took away from working with Paul? Where you went, ah, I'm going to do that. That's great. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's weird. Like, I mean, most of acting, for me anyway, I just, I, I, I kind of fell into acting and I don't know really what. Um, what I'm doing at all. And, uh, Keep it up. <laughs> but like, with, I mean, I think what I, I, but I do really like movies and I've always really liked movies and, uh, and I kind of like the idea of like, being in a movie like this, I get to work with David and then you kind of, you realize how much easier it is when you just have like great people. If you have, I mean, you don't have to do anything. You're not, at, you, you're not even thinking. Like if you get, uh, like with Paul, I didn't have a single thought in my head the entire time. I mean, and, I, and he would, I think, say the same thing, probably. I mean, but it's kind of, it's amazing. I've never really done anything where it's amazing to watch someone just provide infinite amounts of uh, stuff to play with. Um, I have no idea if it makes any sense. What time is it? You, <laughs> we've, we've been up here for about four and a half hours. <laughs> no, no, no. As I can. Just a sec. Is, is Jen Fraley from New Hampshire here? Wow. New Hampshire is here, but not Jen. Uh. But I love this question, very well put. Uh, this is to you, Rob. Uh, when I first heard Eric Packer speak, I was surprised to hear the change in Rob's voice. It effectively captured Pack Packer's disconnect with those around him. Who, who chose to change your voice, and what was the reasoning behind it? <laughs> I, I think I did. Uh, uh, that was my guess. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's a very... I, I th it's weird, because David said... It's, uh, at the end, before I'd met Don DeLillo, I'd, I'd, I'd only met him when we went to Cannes. And, uh, but I thought there was a really obvious cadence in the, in the writing. And, uh, and I could kind of hear it as soon as I started reading it. I mean, it I mean, I can't hear that my the accent and it sounded similar to Don's, but like a bunch of people yeah. said it sounds like uh, Delillo's voice, which is really bizarre. I mean, I'd never even watched an interview with him. 
But Maybe I you went on YouTube and watched them. I didn't. I literally, like, I wasn't doing anything. I mean, I just kind of, it just yeah. seemed, uh, that, I, that was right from the beginning. I was trying to, for some reason, I got obsessed with Howard Dean, like uh, the, the, this accent. I, I'm not even vaguely doing a Howard Dean impression at all. <laughs> but I was so into his voice. Like, I thought that guy would have, you know, he would have been a great president just for his voice. Right. It didn't even matter what he was saying. <laughs> like, but, um, well, and then he got let down by his voice. That's really strange. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, Eric Packer did not get let down yeah. by his voice. No, he did not. But I, I think in a weird way, you could say that it was Don DeLillo who chose that voice for Rob because of the way he wrote his, di <coughs> his dialogue, which mm. I've transcribed very faithfully in the script. You know, I mean, in a way, the dialogue determines the voice. When you're working with an instrument as good as this one. That's <laughs> correct. <laughs> <laughs> if Rob were a violin, he would be a Stradivarius. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a compliment, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> can't go wrong in this crowd with complimenting Rob Pat. <laughs> I think you're fairly safe that way. Um, uh, this is another nice question from Sarah Morrill. Uh, oh! <laughs> The, the only people who've heard about this movie are in the okay. room. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Just get that tiny bit of a feeling what it's like to be you, Rob. <laughs> Whoa. The energy. Our friend Sarah, <laughs> our buddy. Oh, yeah. thanks a lot. There you go. Represent. Um, <laughs> do you feel... Didn't you can pull me up if I get this wrong, Sarah. <laughs> Do you feel any differently about limousines after spending so much time filming in one? What an excellent question. I always, I've always liked limousines, to be honest. Like I, Are you a town car or a limo guy? I mean, if you could have a limo every time, I would always take the limo, to be honest. You would? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of, I think that's one of the nicest ways to travel. I always go down to Comic Con in a, in a limo. It's like the only time I ever get to use one. But uh, it was great. You mean from LA to Las Vegas? Or? To uh, yeah. San Diego, yeah. Okay. One of the greatest oh, yeah. trips I've ever I, I went through the, uh, the army base there once. The camp, was it Pendleton? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it was kind of just 80, mi 80 miles, there's tanks either side and helicopters and going down this. Okay, <laughs> but limousine. let's just talk about this for a sec. <laughs> Town car, you're in a nice seat. Guys, or the woman is sitting right there and driving you. Limo, you've got about, you know, 20 feet between you. <laughs> what do you do with the 20 feet? <laughs> I mean, you, you like it, but what's it good for, really? It's just, it, it, it is, it's like a packerism. It's like, a, you know, it's just the fact that it's there. <laughs> it's the, uh, right. it's, uh, it's worth it just to be there. Also, a limousine now is probably cheaper to hire than a town car. Like, which is this funny thing about it. <laughs> so it's, it's a weird, weird thing is if you lose a lot of it, like when you call for a town car, you end up with the white stretch that's <laughs> about this long. I, actually, kind of, I found the, because I found it as soon as I read it, there was, it was very, very obvious to me. And it was, it was the kind of, the terror of having to like prove yourself. You're like, oh, I've definitely got to concentrate on the kind of the monologues. Like I've got to, you know, the philosophical aspect of it, you kind of, you know, you're, you're so scared of looking dumb, basically. Like when you figure, like that's what I was, the first time I saw it was, uh, I didn't laugh at all the first time I saw it. But- uh, Watching the, the movie. Yeah, yeah, I literally had to have other people around to, to watch it with me because I was, I mean, no one was really like playing it for, for laughs, I mean. This is a question for um, uh, Rob from, Mary Hubble. <laughs> you can't, that, uh, uh, I thought you were all claiming it. <laughs> the Hubble Space Center. Uh, Whoa. <laughs> I, I, we, we usually don't do it this way, so I didn't get the hang of this, but I got it now. Good to see you, Mary. The, uh, <laughs> Eric, Eric, I, and I hope I do justice to your question. Eric Packer <coughs> seems, this to you, Rob, Eric Packer seems almost diametrically opposed to who you are as a person. 
I wonder if that made playing the character easier or harder for you? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's like, you know, you kind of, I don't think, I mean, you can't play, you can, I guess you can play somebody else. You can't be somebody else, like in a, in a movie. I mean, you kind of, I think every, every part, you know, if, if, that's, if, if you're spending the majority of your time on a set, you just kind of, you're just bringing in stuff in your life. And, you know, what, I mean, what, what I liked about it was the words. I, I, I just wanted to say the words, but it's really just, it is just you, you're just putting on a voice, and you're putting on a voice and, a, and you get set, whatever your impulses tell you to do with your gestures and stuff. And, uh, and also the people who are coming into the movie. I mean, you, you react to them in certain ways and it's really, you know, whoever David decided to plop in the, in the car with me. I mean, uh, it's an, always entirely different. I, I, I literally, right up until we started shooting, I could not predict, I had no plan at all until I literally started speaking. And then you gradually have less and less of a plan, <laughs> but, it's already, but it's going at that point. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't think it's diametrically opposed at all. I mean, I liked it. I like him. I really like him. And, uh, and I like watching the movie. I think he's cool. <laughs> I mean, like, it's got a... Uh... <laughs> Rob, wow. we love you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. And, uh... <laughs>